like the masses and turn the political bitch will stand beside me. I'm just followers, but just Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another episode of Any Views and I'm here with the most talented and I feel probably, for me, I'm, I'm inspired by him and his music anyway. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Mr. Koji Radical. What about you? <laughs> How you doing bro? Sorry. You like that introduction, yeah? Yeah, that's, I love that. That's what we need. <laughs> I didn't want to go in too deep because they might think it's too much, but yeah, you've got to show appreciation for your work and no, stuff. I love for having me bro. Yeah, Appreciate definitely. Love for coming down. Um, we're going to get right into it. Um, I love this line. I, I was, after reading up on you and reading the Hunger Magazine Hunger. interview, yeah, magazine, yeah. one of the lines that you said, and I, I'll read out for you here, hypocrite with common sense, yeah. and that's all I want to be remembered for. Yeah, 100%. In saying that, do you ever feel, or is there like ever a worry that people won't, basically, people may not understand your work or your message through your visuals? Uh, I think people already don't understand it. <laughs> so I feel like, again, it's kind of like operating on that, like, I don't really care what people think. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I just want to create stuff that allows people to think. So they don't have to agree with me. They don't have to get it. They don't have to do anything. They just, at least if you take the time to watch it, you can form your own opinion of what you want. Because I feel like what, I was, what I'm creating kind of answers, ticks so many boxes across so many different boards mm. that it kind, of, it kind of becomes a little bit overwhelming ah. sometimes. Do you know what I mean? But then at the same time, like, because I don't seek validation, like, Everything that I'm doing is because I genuinely feel something. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, so if I speak on an issue or I speak on a matter, it's because like I've got something to say. If yeah. I don't have nothing to say, then keep quiet. So yeah. People don't hear me. And so <laughs> modest. Yeah. So modest. And go into that. The creation. Push crayons. Mm -hmm. Now that's you and Craig, aka most popular human. Yeah. When I read that, I was just, I was just laughing about myself. Yeah. Explain yeah. to us what that is about. What is um, you guys' purpose and what's your plans for the future? What's your view for Push Crayons? Basically, Crayons? so Push Crayons started. Um, with me and Craig just kind of really just being hungry yeah. and being tired of people telling us no. Mm -hmm. And um, so we just, we had, um, Craig's dad bought us our first camera, it was a 600D. Oh, okay. And he was like, if I buy this camera, you gotta make me rich. <laughs> <laughs> Easy task, yeah. yeah. And I was like, say nothing, Pops, like, do you know what I mean? We'll, we'll get it done. And then, um, our whole kind of idea behind it is we wanted it to be a collective, but I feel like collect collectives get a bit, um, convoluted sometimes, especially mm -hmm. when you're dealing with members mm -hmm. um, and faces, because mm -hmm. naturally there's always going to be one that might take the pres like the forefront. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, it was much more about like, forget all of that, let's cr concentrate on the work. Mm -hmm. So the collective kind of grew and grew and grew. And nobody really knows how many people are in it or who's in it. Mm -hmm. But I was just about to ask you yeah, that as well. But like, the work's good. And that's so, what that matters. Yeah. That's all that matters. <laughs> that's all that matters. So for, for me and Craig, it's kind of been a, um, a crazy kind of experience seeing the how it's grown yeah so organically without us having to really um shove it down people's throats like i'm never that type of person mm. like, i literally just put stuff in the world and if you come across it you find it that's you 100 percent, 100 percent. so natural with it yeah man. um were you surprised at how how well you was received at the tape modern like yeah, well, you know? yes and no no like, I knew it was going to be a good turnout. Yeah. I didn't expect the turnout that we had. Mm -hmm. That was crazy. Um, but then at the same time, like, it's the job, innit? Mm -hmm. like, this is actually my occupation. So, like, no day in the office should really be that shocking. Do you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just that. And um, it was, it was so, it was so sick to just kind of see the demographics of people that came up. Because we had people, like, loads of young people, like, people my age, maybe younger, like, 17 to to 25 or whatever in that kind of demographic and then we had mothers bringing their children as young as like eight mm -hmm. just to kind of come and listen to some sense <laughs> you know I mean? of course and and everyone in this kind of one space just appreciating the, the visual and and the performance and the artwork from stephanie kane and and it was just so much kind of like because we had to do it there were so many people we had to do it 100 people at a time yeah back to back every half an hour oh, wow. um, until we covered like I think of, like maybe only about a hundred people got turned away. Yeah, which is decent. Yeah, that's a good thing as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it means that obviously people wanted to see it, yeah, then there was more, yeah. so it's full on. <laughs> it's Fair enough. Yeah. Lewis Levi and Alex Ress, mm. they they directed your movie Open Hand. Yeah. Um, in saying that, who thought of the concept of slavery? Because I did feel like you touched on that as well as race, ethnicity, and stuff. Yeah. What? Why did you feel like you needed to touch on that now? Uh, why was that an issue now? Because, in, do you know what, it's, it's in, in some facets, like, the human attention span is very short. 
dead. So, yeah. You've got right. Snapchat for God's sake. Yeah, ten seconds. Ten seconds. Instagram <laughs> fifteen and buying a seven. It's, peak. <laughs> <laughs> it's so deep. And and what happens is, is an issue will come up, and we'll acknowledge it, acknowledge it's an issue. Yeah. Only as far as it's in our interest. Do you know what I mean? As soon as it kind of starts to dwindle from being the talking point, we stop caring. And um, the idea of slavery has always been linked to like the white oppressor and, and, the, and the black slave, mm-hmm. but slavery carries across so many different demographics, boards, races. It's, it, even now, it's, it's the idea of like warfare is completely different. Like our, de- our mental idea of warfare is trenches and battlefields and World War this and World War that, but mm-hmm. our wars now are not on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're happening in our communities, in our homes and in our areas. Oh, cool. um, so kind of like going to this state of like, well, if people listen to me and they respect what I'm saying and they find it to be important, mm. I still feel in a state of slavery. Do you know what I mean? And, and that could be societal, yeah. that could be racial, mm-hmm. that could be anything. Do you know what I mean? I could just be a slave to the industry that I'm in. Of course. And, and having to tick certain boxes in order to exactly. understand what my success is. Exactly. So, I think the, the, the picture of it mm-hmm. instantly kind of makes you feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I think that uncomfortable, uncomfortability either forces you to turn away or forces you to watch. Mm-hmm. So when Lewis and Alex came to me with the idea, um, I really had some like ideas I was playing with and they kind of just, the, that's the great thing about working with Lewis and Alex is that the synergy, mm-hmm. they're very big on synergy. They, they, they'd never take a project that they didn't feel passionate about mm-hmm. because we only really have one voice as creatives, do you know what I mean? So we have to kind of use them to our best best ability. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, once they pitched me the idea, I was just like, say nothing. I was like, I think I added in a couple of things. Yeah. Um, but I trust those guys, man. Like, right. even coming off the work back of working on Bamboo, yeah. working on the Garden Party and all that kind of stuff, the synergy's there, man. Mm-hmm. We know how to work. So for us, man, we're just forcing, forcing people to... The music videos are pointless. <laughs> Why'd you say that? That's the point is, music videos used to come out with a song, so it was exactly. a, it was a promotional package. Yeah, like even in in industry, they don't call music videos music videos; they call them promos because yeah. they're literally just tools to promote the song. Mm-hmm. Um, and now that we're consuming media in different ways, mm-hmm. SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Tidal. Wow, there's you know, so many streams. List goes on. <laughs> Do you know what I mean even? What is it? NPR has their own one. Yeah. Hot new hip hop has their own stream. Like, do you know I mean, there's so many different ways to to come across and interact with music, but you don't necessarily need a music video to make a song mm-hmm. popular. Mm-hmm. The song can be popular on its own because it can travel through the culture, the streets, the the club nights, the mm-hmm. the, the iPhones. Do you know what I mean? Whatever. Of course. It will travel. So now that we're in an age where the conventions of a music video don't necessarily have to fit the archetypes that were already placed up placed in in the world Mm -hmm. you can kind of challenge them and force people to consider them a new light so of course we're not really trying to make music videos trying to make statements views on life is amazing i'm glad i caught this you know (laughs) trying to make statements yeah exclamation (laughs) point see now i haven't had a chance to see some of your earlier illustrations but i was told that they were fantastic but i also know that they were Influenced by artists such as Jean Mo- Jean Michael Basquets, yeah. Keith Herring, yeah. Andy Warhol, etc. Yeah. Now those men have passed, yeah. but they've left their stamp on the on the world. Yeah. So how how big of an impact have they had on your life and your work? Massively. The crazy the, the craziest thing I took all my artwork offline because mm. it's the last thing that I have creatively that I feel like people can't judge me on. So if I write a poem and mm-hmm. make a song, expectations are high. Mm-hmm. So I kind of, I'm always nervous. I'm like, well, what if people don't get this one? And mm-hmm. I know they're not going to get it regardless, but I'm like, what well, if they don't get this one? So my artwork was the last thing I kind of had. Mm-hmm. And um, all those artists, Basquiat, Keith Haring, Warhol, mm-hmm. they cemented their position over time as artists. So you recognise them just as much as you recognise their work. Of course. And um, and to a certain degree, they've all had different challenges per se. Mm-hmm. Like especially Basquiat, like 
his story is is one that just continues to fascinate me in terms of a his personality yeah how he was received in the time that he was in yeah um the the nature of like the kind of party culture and 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 even like new york being this 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 melting melting pot for for different kind of cultures and and the they're just being this kind of like energy in the party scene and, mm. and and even like down to like what Keith Haring he died of AIDS like do you know what I mean like it's fucked like like I'm sure in that time people were even scared to have sex mm. do you know what I mean or something crazy but now in this day and age it's, it's just completely <laughs> different, completely like, different right? to, do you know what I mean and to be able to then <laughs> communicate the times within the art yeah for me is mind blowing so like, cause I always feel like as artists, we're supposed to reflect the times that we're in. Like, it's weird to think, but thirty to forty, maybe to fifty years from now, yeah, people will consider luck off as a statement of our generation of our time, and that blows my mind. Mm. <laughs> like, that completely, like, just just takes me to a whole other place. So, I think the reason why they they inspired me so much was just how much they managed to solidify themselves as being part of a generation of a culture and a time yeah. bigger. So, yeah, no, that's crazy. Arrival, presented by DJ Semtec. Here's how they capture your performance. Mm -hmm. Watching Koji Radical mm -hmm. is like being intoxicated by a rich wealth of intense lyrical knowledge. Mm -hmm. When given any performance, what do you as an artist want your audience to take away from that? You know, like, like, how do I explain it? Performances are so big for me because mm. like, even like, I think of stuff weird. So like, the positioning, mm. like I'm on a stage mm -hmm. as one person or with my bands, so yeah. we're just individuals mm -hmm. in front of a crowd of people and it's our job to entertain them. Do you know what I mean? And I think, I remember the idea of seeing an artist live is, is so weird because like, you spend so much of your, your time listening to them mm. in your spare time and almost creating an image of who they are and what, what kind of person they are. So like performances is the closest you get to them mm. per se. So whenever I get on stage and I'm, I'm performing, I kind of always, I always go back to like watching performers that I loved and getting chills at being like raw. Who were they? Ooh. Give me like one or two. Uh, new school. Shaka. Yes. Yes. Shout out to Shaka, by the way. I want that interview. Hold <laughs> Shaka. Insane crowd control. Like, stuff like that. Just that like, kind of like you watch and go, how do you do that? J Flows. <laughs> J if you watch J Flows perform, like, you're just like, you are a god amongst men. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, the energy, the crowd control, the belief. Like, I always say words aren't important until believe people believe you. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. it doesn't matter what you're saying. Mm -hmm. If people don't believe you, you're talking shit. There you go. That's a word of advice to everyone that's watching there. Watching. <laughs> look at that look. <laughs> now, this one, one thing that fascinated me when I was reading up on you was that mm. being compared to Jill Scott Heron. Yeah. That, have you heard about that? Have you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's mad. Being compared to... <laughs> Jill, so take that in for a moment. Mad. <laughs> Jill Scott Heron. Yeah. It must be a privilege. How do you deal with when media compares you to someone like him? Is there any sense of pressure or do you feel like the comparisons are completely false. I say thank you, then I go Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 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 cool because like he was such a, a pillar in, in his time. Yeah. Um and even stuff that he's done before still rings true to this day. Mm -hmm. And um if people consider me in that same light, I would just say just give me the time to make myself great. Like open hand was definitely inspired by the revolution cannot be televised, um, which is definitely one of my um, favorite songs. Like once I saw how Jamie XX interpreted poetry in a musical format, I was like, "Yeah, it's possible." Mm -hmm. All right, let me ask you a question: How yeah. do you define rap? I would define rap as an expression of how someone feels. Okay. But I feel like that's music in general, yeah, anyway. Music. Yeah. So, like, realistically, rap can come out in any form, mm -hmm. and I feel like the craziest thing is. I don't, I've never cared, I've never really cared per se if people say, are you a rapper? I'll tell people I'm not a rapper, but I don't actually, like it's not 
burning me deep down as much as people think that it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if a song comes up and it requires me to be more in pocket or more beat, I'll do that. One extra, Charlie Sloth. Mm-hmm. Now. I didn't do Charlie Sloth, I did Tully T. Tully T? Mm. Oh, apologies, Charlie. Tully T. <laughs> Tully T. Um, how important was that to you? And do you feel like you needed one anyway? <laughs> I'm just being seriously. Legs. <laughs> I'm being serious. But my opinion, if you really, if I'm being honest, I didn't need one. I feel like, no. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't need anything. Um, I think for me, it was kind of more so like I'm, I'm a poet, yes, but I'm mm. not gonna shy away from any challenge. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So anything that a rapper would do, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it better. Do you know what I mean? So. Dope. Like when I got the the invitation for that, mm. for me it's kind of like how do I explain it best? Being a young artist, there's certain platforms that you see and you write off because you feel like you'll never get there. Mm-hmm. And radio is one of them. Radio, you just think, oh whatever, man, I'm never going to be on radio because mm. my stuff's too this way. Or it's only for this kind of person. Yeah, of course. To tear. So you kind of like disregard that until until it seems like it's a possibility. Mm-hmm. So until you kind of get the little, the knots on the door going, actually, no, we're interested in it. And all of a sudden you're like, yeah. Collaboration with Jay Flows. Now I know, I know Jay Flows. I know, I know the person who directed that movie. So yeah. I just wanted to know, ha- prior to that point, mm. have you guys made music before? Yeah. Or was that your first time? Nah. No. The craziest thing, right? And this is, this is how mad the progression of all of this is. The first time I ever recorded a verse on music mm. was for um, a guy called Ricky Queen. And um, so Ricky invites me down to record this this verse. So we get down there um, and Jay Flows is in there recording another record. Mm. Um, and that was literally the first time I met him. And listening to him record was insane for me because he has such a texture to his voice that mm. cuts through music and forces you to listen Mm -hmm. and i kind of instantly knew like yeah this kid is dope Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah so j flows is definitely an artist that i I love and respect thoughts on labels um (laughs) 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 he's gonna love this seriously (laughs) (laughs) i think this lad was so interesting to me in open hand it was like I'll spend your advance on my lunch. <laughs> what kind of a reaction was you expecting from the audience? Did that, that seemed kind of premeditated. So mm. what was you expecting? Because I know that someone was going to say that. And then after he even saying that, he was like, you can't say that. <laughs> yeah, you can't say that. <laughs> you can't say that. Um, because you're, cause as an artist, that's the, that's the goal, isn't it? Yeah. I want to be signed. I want to be famous. I want to do this. I want to do this show. I want to go here. I want to go conquer America. Do one. I don't care, <laughs> I don't care bro. Do you know what I mean? What, what, what is that? An advance is a loan. Mm-hmm. So you're borrowing money to me in order to make a product in which I then have to pay back to you more or less with interest. I might as well go Nando's. Oh, fuck that, I might as well go somewhere fancy. Hell, my nigga Jamie Oliver. Tell me Chef Sank in his living room. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Spend the whole thing on that. Like, who cares? Like, <laughs> who cares? Because realistically, I don't know. I know artists that are signed and can't get a third of the people that I get out of my Of course. Shoes. It's funny that you say it in that perspective because even now when you speak, when you see independent artists and they look at being signed, some of them would say that, no, they don't want to be signed. Would you say that that's a facade? Like they, they just literally, they deep down, deep down, they want to be signed, but they're just doing it as a front because independence is such a cool thing now or? They, they don't necessarily want to be signed, they want to be successful and they see being signed as a measure of success. Straight. Yeah. There you go. What's next for you? Um, I'm going to go chill with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's my um, and um, January 28th. Yeah. Shut yeah, it down again. Uh, yeah. Shut yeah, it down again, yeah. Again. 23 winters, I turn 23, I'm, I'm sacrificing my birthday to put on a show. Okay. So, be thankful. Amen. It's gonna be sick. <laughs> Koji, yeah. thank you, always a pleasure, sir. Uh, thank you so much pleasure. for coming down. Thank you for the interviews, even though you don't do many, so I'm privileged. <laughs>
<laughs> and um, literally, love, thank you so much for coming down once no, again, man. Seriously. We no longer need to close our fists for the revolution, D. Open bar may show you our separation is man-made. Made in Adolf, cementing thoughts that turn John Doe to Adolf.